These claims are almost unbelievable. But Richard Dawkins dedicated a book to him and then he had filmed and produced all these quite famous videos. So I decided to do a little research to see if what he said was true. I was very impressed, so I decided to call Josh and ask him to come to our studios in California and tell us what it was that brought him to Christ. Atheism is a really useful worldview for weak men. Kind of, I remember the first time we went in there, we both kind of looked at each other like, can you believe we're here? Like, when's the last time we stepped foot in a church? <laughs> think that you came to faith in Jesus, and then to think that you were Richard Dawkins' right-hand man, and then the icing, the double icing on the cake was that you were there for the Banana Man fiasco. That just thrilled my heart. So we're really excited to hear your story. So Josh, take us back, man. I mean, we want to yeah. kind of go back in time and connect with how this entire journey started for you. And there's a lot of things you wanted to do and the church didn't really line up with that, you know. And I, I was exposed to like Dawkins and some of those other atheist authors around that time and, and reading those. And it's kind of a combination of things when you look back at it. It's hard to put your finger exactly on one thing, but I think for me it was a, a bit of, well, this is the life I want to lead. And this sounds fairly plausible to an 18-year-old kid. Like, okay, yeah, that sounds like an explanation for things. And, and I think at that time, too, you're, you're growing out of a lot of things. You're, you're kind of becoming like, oh, you know, the Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and that kind of stuff. Right. And you say, like, well, this is probably part of that package, you know, that yeah. I'm just going to shed this mm. and, and grow up. And, you know, you get a little chip on your shoulder that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm graduating here, you know. And uh, I think that's a little bit of it. And also, yeah, the desire to just do what you want to do, and, you know. Atheism is a really useful worldview for weak men. Hmm. And, and I mean weak in many different senses, but for me, I look back at it and say, well, externally, you're going with the flow. You're part of the, uh, the, the secular culture, right? You're, you're, you're in agreement, and, and that's a very safe, like, herd position to be in. Yeah. Uh, especially in the modern America, right? The flip side of that internally is complete freedom. It's like, well, you know, in my own right. inner life, there's no consequence, there's no reason for me to not do what I feel like doing in my inner life. So mm. I feel like it's something that, when I look back at myself and, and you know, I'm, I'm putting myself labeled as a weak man at that point, mm. at like 18 years old. So did Dawkins have an influence on you? Yeah, I read The Selfish Gene when I was 18, and that was the first one I'd read. I, I've read the other ones, Extended Phenotype, Blind Watchmaker, Climbing Mountain Probable. And uh, so I'd run through a bunch of his books. And so what know. books did he dedicate to you? I got a thank you in The God Delusion. That's, that's this one here. Do you think that's a, a systemic issue with Dawkins or other atheists where they're not, um, you know, in that situation, he's not interacting with the actual conversation, the actual argument that's put forward. He's strawmanning a, a humorous moment, right? Do you see that as a systemic issue within Dawkins and other atheists where they're not actually interacting with the arguments, instead they're, they're strawmanning? Oh yeah, I mean there's a lot of just, I think, yelling at each other, right? I mean yeah. I think that's something, uh, it's a danger whenever you interact with anyone, you know, even as a Christian, to interact with somebody and to say, to just be preaching at them as mm -hmm. opposed to having a conversation. Yeah. I, I think the internet's horrible for this, right? 100%. Uh, you know, uh, YouTube videos and a reaction to the YouTube video right. and a reaction to that, you know, you just get layered. You and, just get echo chambers. Yeah. yeah, and a lot of times it's just, you know, it, it's more of that dopamine hit that yeah. somebody just wants to see something funny and, you know, somebody's on an atheist forum saying, I want to get a little chuckle this morning and yeah. ah, look at this dumb thing, you know, right. move yeah. on. That, that, that strikes me as odd <laughs> in that you go from atheists, and then this thing happens in Portland, and then suddenly it's, yeah, what about a church? But like, that's a, that's a major like leap. Yeah, it so is. So was there anything in between? There was no moral foundation in Portland, what was going on yeah. around us. And I think we were just trying to get to solid ground. Mm. That we're looking around thinking, well, this isn't where we want to be. You know, it's like we're you know, on the boat, yeah. you know, this rock, and we're trying to say, well, where do we get off? Right. We found this uh, cowboy church near our house, and we thought, well, we could try to go something like that. That sounds just weird enough that maybe we could <laughs> sit in the back and, and nobody will notice us, you know, us yeah. atheists, not actually believe in any of this, but maybe we can steal some of those benefits, those social benefits, wow, you know, of the yeah. nice uh, community and the nice people, you know, and, and I mean, I'm very cynical with that. Sure, sure. Uh, 
so we, we sort of just decided to start going and seeing what it was like and um, got my daughter into Sunday school so she could be <laughs> doing that. You know, in a way, it's like you don't really know what you're doing right. at that moment. You're just yeah. kind of, you're, you're yeah. in this fog of like, well, this seems better than what we were doing. I can remember that. I think God did a work in my heart. I got saved, but then I spent a year confused. Mm. And when I first started going to church, it, it felt pragmatic. In a, in a way, like I know it was faith that was leading me to that. I know that it was God that was guiding me towards that. But uh, I, I've used the phrase a fog as well. It was, mm. it was a fog. It's like uh, the veil is slowly being torn away. Uh, yeah. And there's a lot of unwinding to do when you spent so much time reading books and I'm sure making documentaries. Yeah. Do you recall that shift from pragmatism to like this is, this is morally good for our daughter and us to this is what I believe? We went for a while just pragmatically and... But, but still committed atheists. Like in your hearts and minds, you're still like, this is a bunch of baloney. Yeah. Well, no. And I thought back to, as an atheist, watching a documentary that was somebody else had made called The God Who Wasn't There. Hmm. And it, was a, it had a whole section on Jesus not existing. And I remember how I had just bought that as soon as I watched it. Like, you know, it wasn't that I studied it, not that I sat and dissected the details yeah. of Jesus' life. It was just like, oh, atheist documentary telling me that it is. And yeah, sure, great. <laughs> and I thought, well, do I buy this or not? You know, do I buy what is being told here? Do I believe Jesus was a person? Did he live? Mm. And, and I'd sort of written that off completely when I was younger, that he didn't live at all. Yeah. So I read uh, Lee Strobel's Case for Christ, mm. uh, which was a big book for me. Uh, in that moment where, oh, there's all this evidence around Jesus' life. And, you know, it wasn't just a mythological mm. evolution of tale uh, over a few hundred years that, no, it was actually written very closely after Jesus' mm. life. Mm. And, um, and all the other corroborating evidence and all the evidence around the death and resurrection. And So then, Josh, at what point then did you finally recognize, I believe that this, this Jesus is the Messiah. He did rise he did die and rise again, and I need to repent and surrender my life to him. Yeah, that was, I think shortly after reading Case for Christ, that was when I had to, I had to deal with the fact that it was real, mm -hmm. that Jesus was real. Yeah. That's, to me, the defining piece, that you have Jesus actually lived, he actually died, and he actually rose, and I have to deal with that. Yeah. I, can't, I can't just push that aside and say, oh, it's a myth. Hmm. Like, no, this is real events. Um, and then I'm being asked to do something. I'm being asked. So it, it, it's a personal thing between him and me. Hmm. And I think that's where it kind of struck differently, you know? And, and I was like, yeah, that's, <laughs> this is it, you know? And that was the domino where, I mean, yeah, maybe there's a little bit of, of still fog and transition that comes around before and after all of that. Yeah. But, but that was really... I think it was Jesus is hmm. who he says he is. And that's, I think that's the hardest thing for a non-believer to cross over. Can you imagine if Paul or someone mentioned in the New Testament later came to deny Christ rather than die for him? It's amazing to see somebody who is so deeply involved with Richard Dawkins, who directed a Richard Dawkins movie, who had dedications in multiple Richard Dawkins books, upon reviewing the evidence for Christ, has come to Christ. Reading books like Lee Strobel's Case for Christ, Josh and Sean McDowell's Evidence for Jesus, or Evidence that Demands a Verdict, I believe would lead any open mind to these same conclusions, that of course Christ did die, he was resurrected, lived among his disciples for 40 days. There's a lot of atheist disinformation in certain atheist films and videos completely denying that Jesus of Nazareth ever existed. This is quite common. In fact, an atheist who replied to one of my videos completely denied it. Historians are not on their side. For people who care about the evidence, you got to note and you got to acknowledge and you got to confirm, of course, all the historians agree, and I agree with the historians, Jesus did live. And then you have to determine 
who was Jesus? We don't just have the New Testament on this, by the way. We have the writings of Clement, a very early source for Christianity, a first century bishop who knew Paul and knew Peter. We have a lot of historical support, more manuscripts for um, early primary source Christian writings than any other historical writings. I also recommend everybody to look at the arguments produced by the founder of Harvard Law, Testimonies of the Evangelists. I will include a source for that in the description and comments, and as always, the original source video for what I included here today is also in the description. Christ is King, Every Knee Will Bow. This Atheist Convert series is now nearing 1 million views. All glory, all honor, all power to our risen Lord and Savior who truly died on a cross, truly rose from the dead in accordance with the scriptures, truly lived among his disciples, appearing for 40 days, and truly lives with us today, and truly brought myself and Josh Teneman from the weak lives of atheism to being stronger men, much stronger men in Christ. We no longer live for our bodies, chasing worldly pleasures like alcohol or marijuana or pornography. We leave all these things behind and look ahead to the glorious return of our great God and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.11 there.